And, and so imagine if a television set had dropped on, say, Toronto, then you wouldn't get much damage. Uh, 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 just very poor reception. And perhaps the most encouraging thing about, about this whole incident is the responsible way in which the American and Soviet authorities uh, cooperated to hide the truth from everyone else. Uh, and with me in the studio, I have a Dr. Brzezinski, who is a loony scientist like me. Uh, no, doctor, uh, how, how, how do you see it? Grossing will about me. Yes. Oh, it's no problem. It's you brain. What was here a while? Ah, what are you? Yes, yes. Mm. Well, there you have the American point of view. Well, uh, to sum up then, uh, we scientists feel that the danger from Cosmos 954 is nil. Or, to put it in layman's terms, uh, very considerable. You see, there is every chance that within 10 or 20 years we'll be able to witness a full-scale global war beginning in space. And that's the sort of spectacle uh, that you only get a chance to see once in a lifetime. <laughs> uh, well, I must go now, as I have to have this material made up into a suit. Uh, yes. uh, good night. <laughs> They used to call it the Monfort in the Charing Cross Hotel, a lovely Victorian restaurant where everyone dined so well. But now British transport, bless them, have filled this old heart with glee. Oh, how can I curb my excitement? They're naming it after me. They'll probably change all the menus. I wonder what they'll have on. Perhaps it will be Poulet Betchman or Bouillon de Boeuf, Sir John. Oh, do help yourself to the cheese board, and waiter, we'll have some more wine. And while we are drinking our coffee, who knows, I might write the odd line. It's not that I want to be famous, I'm used to the diner who stares, but I'm tired of the people who whisper, I wonder who's that with Amers. All right, all right. Time's up. You've done it. <laughs> we won. We won. Party, party. Bad luck. Yes, well, I hope you're satisfied. Perhaps now you'll consider behaving like responsible MPs. <coughs> <coughs> yes, we're going to vote on the next motion right now. Well, which way are you going to vote? Like this. You close your eyes while we run and hide. And now here is next week's news. The weekend. After last week's cabinet talks on the future of nuclear power reactors, the Friends of the Earth say that Britain needs a quieter, cheaper and less dangerous version of Wedgwood Ben. The juror, whose behaviour caused an entire jury to be discharged, denies allegation that he is an unreasonable man and adds that it was nonsensical of the half-witted geriatric judge to abandon the case. Monday. MPs ask for another experiment in broadcasting from Parliament, as after two and a half years arguing about it, they have forgotten what the experiment was like. Michael Edwards, head of British Leyland, says he is pleased to see that management is now setting the workforce a fine example, and he hopes that as many workers as possible will follow their lead and give up their jobs. Tuesday. There is an encouraging development in the Middle East as Egyptian and Israeli ministers get round the table and agree on a preliminary courteous and reciprocal exchange of missiles. Following the award of Newspaper of the Year to the Daily Telegraph, the editor says that next year he will try to publish it twice. Wednesday. The medium accused of cheating by memorising names before a meeting is found guilty by the spiritualist union, as they say that a genuine medium would have foreseen the charge and avoided it. Thursday. Following reports that a three-ton rhino crashed out of its cage aboard a Lufthansa jet, the Bader Meinhof gang claim responsibility and campaign for its release from a Dutch zoo. A Canadian spokesman claims that high radiation levels in the heart of Canada are due not to the satellite Cosmos 954, but to large numbers of reindeer using aerosols. Friday. Following the beheading in Saudi Arabia of a commoner for marrying a princess, Roddy Llewellyn says he is not taking a holiday there till he finds out the penalty for being just good friends. Asked about the radiation levels in the area where the Russian satellite crashed, the pilot who flew over the debris says that on the one hand the level seemed quite high, although on the other hand there seemed no cause for alarm. But there again, on the other hand, he could be quite wrong. And that is the end of next week's news. <laughs> Thank you.
And that is the end of this edition of Week Ending, in which you heard the voices of David Jason, Bill Wallace, David Tate and Sheila Stiefel and the keyboards of Bill McGuffey. The script was written by Andy Hamilton and Barry Pilton and further contributions from Roger Wallace, Richard Quick, Bob Kingdom, Arnold Brown, Noel Ellis, Ray Bins, Max Alcock, Patrick Moores-Taylor and the producer, Griff Rees Jones. There's a strong theatrical flavour to our Desert Island Discs this evening, as our castaways, the two of them, Raymond Mander and Joe Mitchinson, have built up and look after a huge theatrical collection. They're also authors and have some 20 books to their credit, including books on No Card, Bernard Shaw, Musical, Pantomime, Wagner, and the Lost Theatres of London. Other people also use their collection for research, and they claim to have helped on more than 600 books. Both were actors until soon after the war, when their collection became a full-time responsibility. Well, Raymond Mander and Joe Mitchison will be talking to Roy Plumley and choosing collectively their eight gramophone records in Desert Island Discs after the news at 6.15. It's five to six. And now for the weather forecast from Bill Giles at the London Weather Centre. Good evening. Well, it looks like becoming much colder in the next 24 hours as low pressure over northeast England moves into the North Sea and allows gale force northerly winds to spread right down across the country. They'll bring sleet or snow to most places with the heaviest falls in the north. In fact, over Scotland and Northern Ireland, some heavy falls of snow tonight over the hills, with rain in southeast Scotland turning to snow later on. Tomorrow, further snow in eastern Scotland, brighter in the west and in Northern Ireland, though, with snow showers but everywhere very cold with severe northerly gales. Over Wales, rain turning to sleet or snow this evening with gale force northerly winds, brighter tomorrow with wintry showers but still cold and windy. Now for England and firstly the northeast, as far south as Lincolnshire and Nottinghamshire. Rain turning to sleet and snow, especially over the hills, and temperatures falling to about 2 centigrade, 36 Fahrenheit. Winds will become north to northeast during the night, freshening to gale force tomorrow, so staying very cold with further sleet or snow tomorrow, perhaps some heavy falls over the northern hills. Now East Anglia, the eastern Midlands, London and the southeast. Showers this evening, but rather more persistent rain or sleet will spread from the west later on, and with temperatures falling to about one degree centigrade, there'll be some snow as well, especially over the hills. By the morning, winds will be fresh north to northwesterly, and they'll reach gale force tomorrow, so a very cold day. It'll be cloudy for much of the time with rain or snow, the snow mainly over the hills, but it may become brighter in the southeast by late afternoon. Now the western Midlands and all southern counties west of London are crossed towards Devon and Cornwall. Showers this evening with rather more persistent rain or sleet spreading from the southwest and turning to snow over the hills. A cold night, temperatures near freezing away from the west coast, and it'll become very windy with severe north to northwesterly gales. Tomorrow, a fairly bright day in the southwest with blustery sleet and snow showers, and this somewhat brighter weather will gradually edge into the Midlands and along the south coast during the day, but it'll stay very cold and showery with strong northerly winds. Finally, northwest England, rain turning to snow even on low ground tonight with some heavy falls over the hills, and a very cold and windy night with severe northerly gales. Tomorrow, brighter than today with snow showers, but still very cold and windy. In fact, everywhere tomorrow there'll be very blustery northerly winds with temperatures around 4 centigrade, 39 Fahrenheit. The outlook for Monday and Tuesday, sunny intervals and wintry showers at first, some rain or snow moving southeast to most places on Tuesday. Still cold and frosty at night. And that's the end of the forecast. It was Bill Giles. The guests in tonight's Stop the Week are Anne Leslie, Dr Dick Richards, Professor Laurie Taylor and Milton Schumann and they'll be helping Robert Robinson examine what, if any, psychological impact the National Health Council's Look After Yourself campaign has had on them. Instant Sunshine will still be along to help with the music, and Stop the Week begins at ten past seven. It's followed at half by seven by These You Have Loved, introduced by Christopher Greer. In The American, our Saturday night theatre play, Henry James set his story in the Paris of 1826, and deliberately introduced a seemingly uneducated barbarian in the person of a rich American businessman into that highly civilized society. The inevitable clash of these cultures manifests itself in the love that the American, Christopher Newman, begins to feel for Claire, Comtesse de Sintra. Mr. Newman, 
I don't think you understand. Oh, your brother told me my background will be against me, that your family has a social standing so high that I can't be taken as coming up to it, but I don't believe you really care anything about that. You'll decide for yourself whether you like me or not. I honestly believe you'll learn to love me. Because I'm kind. No, oh, and apart from that, which is the main thing, I have a very large fortune. Everything that money can give you, well, you shall have it there. I've said what I had on my heart. You do me great honor, Mr. Newman. But I've decided not to marry again. Can Newman's wealth persuade Claire otherwise and overcome the family opposition? The American, tonight's play, starring Alec McCowan and Anna Massey, will reveal the outcome. It begins in Saturday Night Theatre at half past eight. Radio 4. <laughs> Radio News at six o'clock. The Prime Minister has hinted that he wants no quick election. Britain's economic strength is growing, he says, and the longer Labour stay in office, the greater their victory at the poll will be. Mr Callaghan has also called for a national effort towards racial tolerance, but a Conservative, Mr Peter Walker, has immediately urged him to match words with actions. And in Wolverhampton, it's now clear that police had to break up a confrontation last night between young blacks and whites, and in doing so, had five of their own men injured. President Sadat will go to the United States next weekend in his efforts to revive the Middle East peace campaign, and he'll report to Mr. Callaghan on his way home. Soccer. Third Division Warsaw beat First Division Leicester. From the Prime Minister today, a clear hint that he's against an early general election. In a speech to the Labour Party local government conference in Bristol, he seemed to suggest that the government should stay in power for as long as possible to improve its margin of victory when it did go to the polls. Mr Callaghan said he believed Britain was now emerging into a period of strong economic growth. And he also made an impassioned plea for racial justice and tolerance in Britain. A full report from Bristol by Dennis Frost. Mr. Callaghan contrasted Labour's present position with the declining days of Attlee's second post-war government. Then the prevailing advice was, let's go to the country, because the longer we stay in power, the bigger our losses will be. But now, the Prime Minister asserted, now the longer we stay, the bigger our victory will be. Mr. Callaghan went on to say that Britain was going to be one of the fastest growing countries in the world in 1978. We are now emerging into a period where we can begin to see the growth coming. This is our springtime. We can begin to see the change from winter. And because of this, it is vital that we should set our priorities out clearly. Don't be afraid of our principles. Let's 